Good morning, Modern Studders. In this morning's video, we're going to be talking about where we ordered our seeds from and what seeds we got. We got them in the mail the other day. I haven't opened them yet. Excited to get in there and see what we got. I know what we ordered, but we ordered from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I don't know if you've ever heard of this company, but the catalog is beautiful. The catalog is almost a work of art. So if you can just get the catalog, to look through it this year. If you don't order seeds from it, you'll be impressed. But one thing they do is with your seeds, they send you, every time you order so many, they send you free packets. So we get some free seeds in there that we have, that I have no idea what they are. So let's dive in and see what we got. The biggest thing I was paying attention to this year when I was ordering my seeds is I wanted seeds that produced fruit in the shortest amount of time. And Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds travel the world to get their seed collection. So they have a great variety of all sorts of vegetables. So we have an Early Wonder Beet. We did a Cabbage Glory of, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. We did some Loofer Squash. I don't know if you guys have ever grown these before. It's pretty neat, you let them grow. And then afterwards, you get a sponge out of them. It's pretty wild. Those are fun. The kids love them. We have tender Roman zucchini. We did a, two different kinds of zucchini this year. All right, here's our other zucchini that we got. This one is squash nimba zucchini. So the big ones that I was really paying attention to this year when we were getting them was tomatoes. We we have this one tomato right here. It's the subarctic plenty tomato. It goes, it'll fruit within 55 days. So that's huge for us in northern New Hampshire. We have a very short growing season. But these were developed in Alberta, Canada. So that's awesome. We have these other tomato plants that are short growing seasons also. And I found in their catalog, I'll have to look up and see, but we have the Sweet Pepper King of the North. These are another short one. So I was very excited about that. I'm curious to see how all these do in our northern climate. What climate or growing zone are you in? We're in zone 4B, so we have a pretty short growing season. So what growing season are you in and what are the things that you pay attention to when buying seeds? We have our Buttercup squash, we like buttercup squash over acorn squash or butternut squash. They're all like the same, but we find the buttercup is a little bit sweeter and we prefer it ourselves. It's like a small green pumpkin looking, very delicious. And then we got some spaghetti squash. We enjoy the spaghetti squash. We found a couple of good recipes and ways to cook this. Really simple, quick and easy. You take it out and you have like your own spaghetti noodles. We ordered two different kinds of lettuce. We have the little lettuce gem and then we got the little Amish deer tongue. Those would be good. These are the ones you can just cut and keep growing. I wanted to thank all the modern studders. We're just shy of 18,000 subscribers. You know what that means. We're 2,000 subscribers away from hitting 20,000. And when we reach our 20,000 subscriber mark, we're gonna be doing our chicken plucker giveaway. If you haven't already signed up for that, I'm gonna put a link here and in the description down below that you can click on and find out how to enter in the giveaway. For carrots, we got the little finger carrots. These are a quick growing carrot too, and they're just a nice small slender carrot. They're supposed to be very sweet. We haven't grown these ones before, but I was thinking they'd make a good snacking carrot and they'd be good for fermenting also. So we have two different kinds of cabbage. We also got the Red Express. And it looks like one of the free seeds they gave us is the Brunswick cabbage. So we'll be trying three different varieties this year. I was excited to try these green beans. They're a bush bean, but they're a slender, smaller bean, kind of like ones that you'd get that are French cut, so that's exciting. We've got some celery going on. 
I'm excited to try celery. We've never grown that before, but I love celery. Celery is so good when you're making your own bone broth, when you're making soups. I just love the smell and the taste of it. So I enjoy it for flavoring. So I can't wait to try our own. We got a sweet pepper. This one's not gonna pronounce it either. But I'll let you figure out how to say that. We got two different kinds of onions. One's an Australian brown. And then the second one, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it. We got our broccoli. It's a Goliath one, so it should be a nice big one. Excited for that. Last year the deers got our broccoli and cabbage and Brussels sprouts, so we'll have to do a better job with that this year. So on the tomatoes, we have the subarctic, which produce fruit within 55 days. We got the pink Berkeley tie-dye. We did those last year. They were a great flavorful tomato and they tasted delicious. We also grew this one last year. Had very good luck with it. Had an awesome flavor and texture. We did all heirloom tomatoes last year and they were delicious. I'm looking forward to growing these and we're gonna have our own pasture-raised, home-smoked and home-cured bacon BLTs. That's gonna be delicious. Been working on our bread recipe, so we'll have fresh homemade bread to go on our BLTs. It's gonna be a good year this year. We have our regular cucumbers that we got. And then we got some smaller Chicago pickling cucumbers, which I thought those would be fun to make pickles out of and just try some different stuff. This is more of a this is more of a northern climate cucumber, so they'll grow really well for us here. We got our early wonder beets. I got a good sized package of those, just because we like our beets. We like eating them, frying them in a frying pan, not deep frying them. Frying them in a frying pan, like sautéing with some onions, some garlic. It's delicious. They're really good for making pickles. Then you can make beet kvass, which is a really good probiotic drink for you. Beets are a great vegetable, so we make sure we got quite a few seeds. That's one of the nice things about Baker Creek heirloom seeds too, is you can buy a regular size packet. You can buy, what is this? This one is a one ounce packet, and then they go on up from there, so you can buy bigger, depending on how big of a garden you have, if you're a market gardener or not. So this was $4.50 for a one ounce, and most of their little packages are $2.50. So it's not a big price difference, and you get quite a bit more. We got a spinach right here. This one's gonna be another good one. So we got a lot of stuff here to grow in our garden. We get all the food that we really love and enjoy to eat. There's a lot more out there that we really like to eat and that we would enjoy growing, but we're, our garden's still gonna be on the smaller side this year, so we're gonna make sure we're starting and setting ourselves up for success. We don't wanna to go too much and not have enough. And so we're trying to plan it out, grow it. We're growing more than we did last year, but we don't wanna to go too nuts. That's one thing you need to keep in mind is you wanna set yourself up for success and not failure. I've been talking with a potato seed company in Maine and I've been talking with them about what is the best kind of potato to grow in a potato tower. So they gave me their thoughts and their ideas on that. And then I need to call them back and find out what potato we should be growing for regular, normal potato growth here in our area. And then we'll be ordering our seed potatoes soon. So that's gonna be fun. I'm excited and looking forward to that. Gina is too. We're looking forward to the garden. We're gonna start making some compost once old man winter leaves, and then we'll really have a great garden. Let's get into the catalog. So if you have their catalog on page 13 is the green beans we got. They're a 50 to 55 day French filet type pod, dark green. These are the green beans we really enjoy, so I wanted to try them this year. We've never grown this style before. Beets. Let's find our early wonder right here. They're a 50 day, an old heirloom pre 1811 plant. 
that's the neat thing with this catalog is they give you all that kind of information. So that is our early wonders. Oh, it's gonna be good. Look how beautiful that fruit is. We actually had those last night for dinner, a golden beet. Those were good. Our broccoli is right here. We got the Goliath. This is a 75 day plant. So that's the one we got for our broccoli. We didn't get cauliflower. Here's all their different cabbages. The ones we got is right here. We got the glory of, we'll let you say that, that's a 90 day. And then was the other one, the Red Express. Doesn't tell you how long, but this is the cabbage. You get into your celery over here. We got the Utah Tall. It's 110 day. I figured Utah has a pretty decent climate like us, so we went with this one. The little fingers, these are the ones we got right here. They're a 55 day baby type carrot. Excited for those. Now we get into our cucumber. You have a Boston pickling cucumber, which we almost got, but I wanted to go with the Chicago. It looked a little bit smaller. And then we went with the Chicago one's a 55 day fruitation. I like that word, fruitation. I don't know if that's a word or not, but I'm gonna use that word. It's a 55 day fruitation. We have our market mower. Got the early fortune. Where's the mar market mowers right here? That's a 70 day one. So we have a 70 day one on the cucumber and a 55 day one. So I think this will be a good variety and we'll have a good staggering growth for our cucumbers and a lot of our other plants also. Even if you're not planning a garden this year, if you're still in the process of getting your homestead or in the process of figuring out what you want to do, if you can get one of their seed catalogs, you can learn so much and plan so much and there's just a huge variety of vegetables in here and plants and heirloom seeds from around our country and just around the world. And they give a lot of the information here in their catalog. It's amazing all the stuff that this catalog is filled with. Let's see. I'm not a huge pea man, but if you can get a good pea that has good flavor, that can add some great flavor complexes to your soups, to your stews, whatever you're making, your salad. So there's a huge selection of peas in here. We got the Alaskan pea. It's a 50 to 60 day variety because I was focusing on a short season. So I am excited to get growing our garden this year. I'm excited to start turning all of our manure and our deep bedding into great compost to grow our gardens, to make the gardens bigger. To start our seeds inside, we got some new grow lights to try out. That's gonna be fun. We got that nice big soil block maker to be adding our medium sized soil blocks into when they need to get transplanted again. We had a lot of questions about soil blocks. We'll be doing videos on that upcoming, but I'll just touch on it a little bit. So they make, you can do like potting soil mixes, but they make a seed starting mix that works really well. You pack it into your soil block maker and it makes a square. You take it out of the form and then you have a nice little square block. You put your seed into it, your seed starts and it starts growing in that block. And the, the roots just go right to the end and they'll just keep growing out. And you can direct plant that right into your garden. You don't disturb the roots. You have really great luck transplanting your plants. Anytime we would buy started plants, they end up dying. I'd say almost 50% of them when we transplanted them because of root stress. With the soil block, you don't have the root stress. And then we'll take the medium ones, if we want to keep them inside longer, like our pepper plants and our tomatoes, we'll go into our larger block. So we'll have like a five inch by five inch block with great composted seed starting soil in there for them to grow in. So when we put them outside, they'll have a huge head start. We need to do that really because we're in, like I said, we're in zone 4B. So we want to give our plants the best success we can give them so we can get the most fruit out of them. 
So we really enjoy the soil blocks. We'll be starting those soon. So if you want to learn more about that, subscribe to the channel, follow along on the journey. But I'm excited. I can't wait to start using all this stuff and growing all this stuff. We can start using our outdoor kitchen more. We can fill up our cave. It's just going to be great. We did a lot of the infrastructure building last year. If you didn't see those videos, we got a lot of great videos on building our outdoor kitchen, building our root cellar. We did a class here last October for harvesting our pigs and putting up that meat. This April, we're going to be doing another class of harvesting our pigs, but we're going to be spending more time on the culinary side. Now that we have this beautiful meat in front of us, what can we make with it? How do we cut up our meat? How do we package it? How do we turn it into sausage? How do we turn it into prosciuttos? How do we make terrinis? Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.